Tech Connect is known for one thing, Luke, and that's breaking news. And we have a brand new product that we're covering today. So Corey, what is the new product? It's called the Optaro. This thing is less than two weeks old at the time of recording. And it is a brand new product from Eschenbach. It is an electronic magnifier, but not what you would expect. Mm. This again is using an iPhone. If you saw our last video on the Maggie IVR, yeah. that was also using an iPhone, but that was a wearable. Yes. This is more of a traditional portable video magnifier. Stick with us. We're gonna take a look at this brand new device. Make sure that you like and subscribe, comment, all those great things. Let's get into it. <laughs> all right, so Optaro has a bunch of pieces that we need to use in order to have it all come together. Number one, we need an iPhone. Um, it works with any iPhone. No. No? No. What, is, what iPhone does it work with? iPhone 12 and above. And who told, are you just making this up? No. Who told us? Big Matt from Eschenbach. Ooh. Yeah. Big Matt. Yes, thank you, Big Matt. For <laughs> why, why are we calling him Big Matt? Because he has a big personality. Oh, okay. He's a nice guy. Um, yes, it works with the iPhone 12 and up, uh, not the SE model. So first of all, gonna have your iPhones. Number two, you need the actual Optaro device itself. This is going to connect to the back of your iPhone. It has a built-in camera and battery, and it is going to provide the image that you need to then show up on your iPhone screen. Number two, no, number three, mm. forgot to count there. You need some kind of case. So there are two options that you can do with the Optaro. Number one, you can get a specific case for your iPhone. So if you've got a 12 Pro, you can get a case that's gonna fit the 12 Pro. If you don't know what phone you have, or maybe you're thinking you're gonna get yourself a new phone in the near future, then you can get the universal case. This will allow you to use any iPhone model 12 or up with the same case, and you can just adjust as needed. The big difference though, is that the universal case is not as secure as the case specific for your iPhone model. Now, Matt was telling us that the universal case was good mm. and worked fine, yeah. but you just couldn't read upside down. Yeah, you couldn't turn it upside down because then the phone would fall out. Which, my question is, how yeah. often is Matt reading or doing things upside down? Well, since he knew that that would happen, I'm guessing quite a lot. I will say the universal case utilizes the magnet on the back of the iPhone in order to uh, kind of secure the iPhone in there. Yeah. But apparently it's not strong enough to take the weight when held upside down. It's actually quite a clever design. It's very clever. Uh, it is, but learn from Matt's mistakes. Don't tip your phone upside down if you're using the universal case. The last piece that it, we need is some kind of way to charge it. Eschenbach does sell uh, separately a uh, charging block that has two USB ports. The reason you want two ports is that then you're able to charge your Optaro via USB-C and your iPhone at the same time, just using that single block. If you don't wanna purchase a double block uh, from Eschenbach and you prefer to use your own, you can do so. Not like you have to use Eschenbach specifically. Okay, so now that we have put the Optaro together, it's time to put it through its paces. And in order to do so, we have brought in a special magazine from Corey's collection here. This is from Corey's People Collection. That's his favorite magazine. And this is from the October 17th, 2022 issue. Corey, why is it that this is one of your well, personal favorites? This favorite actually issues? ranks number six of my favorites. Okay. I mean, I wasn't going to bring you in the top five. That no, obviously. Crazy. But this um, this really highlights the relationship between yeah. Brad Pitt and Emily Ratajkowski. Yes. Uh, so here's Emily in black and white. Let's go ahead and hit the color mode button. I'm going to hit it a few times. Okay, so here she is in her regular color. And we'll go look at Brad as well, because, you know, it's only fair. So there's Brad. Now we're going to go ahead and change some of these colors. So I'll hit the color button. And we have high contrast black on white, Corey. And uh, yes, it is nice and high contrast. Nice dark blacks and white whites. I'll hit it again. And now we have the reverse whites on blacks. Colors that are very common. These are probably the default colors, I'm guessing, Corey, because they are the most common ones. Quality is probably pretty good. It is a 1080p camera. It is, yeah. And, and we're also using the high resolution uh, camera uh, phone screen as well. Yeah, I was so, just going to yeah. say, and the iPhone, especially the Pro. Oh yeah. Uh, is, you know, those that combination's got to give you pretty good results. Yeah, it is a very nice image. Uh, I will say though, maybe the screen of the iPhone is a little glary. 
And okay. so that would be one thing to bear in mind. You know, these touch screens, they tend to be a little bit glary. And here, underneath the studio lights, we're definitely getting some glare on the screen. Sure. Whereas with uh, a lot of other um, electronic magnifiers, that wouldn't be so much of an issue. So something to bear in mind. The next button down on the left side is our camera button. And we could go ahead and take a picture now. So the Optaro app has to have access to the Photos app if we want to save photos. So I'm going to go ahead and allow access here. And that will allow me to save my pictures. And so I've just got a frozen image on the screen. Now we can zoom in on that image and do whatever we want with it. So we could snap a pic with our Optaro app and then go ahead and share those. Um, and you can share in the usual ways via things like AirDrop or text messages or email, all of those different sure. ways that we normally would. Next down on the left side, we have a green button with a speech bubble in it. Corey, any ideas what that might be for? I believe he called that the tell me button. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't want to use the word OCR, although that is basically what it's doing, but yeah. it's only going to speak out loud or perform OCR on whatever text is currently within the kind of the box. It's not even that. It's actually just within the center. Just whatever's on Yeah. The, not even on, is it on the screen itself or just the center of the screen? Yeah, just the center, it seems okay. to be. Well, let's give it a try. So yeah. at the moment in the center, I have In Hollywood Star. Now actually, Corey, I should mention, if we tap the screen in the middle, the controls will disappear and then we'll get the full screen. Okay. Um, so that's what I've done at the moment here. And it says In Hollywood Star 58. Okay, in the middle. Let's see if that's what's red when I hit the green button. Hollywood Star 58. Yeah, it didn't get the, the say the in, but it said Hollywood Star 58. So yeah. it's literally just the words in the center of the screen. Very limited area. This is probably really the first stage of what OCR could look like. Yes, on that's it. very so, true. Yeah, um, but that's kind of cool to be able to just to kind of tap and get a quick verbalization. It's very fast as well, yeah. and we found it to be very accurate yeah. too. Um, so, okay, so let's see uh, what else we have got on the right side. We have magnification control. We have a plus. We also have a minus button as well, and the minus button will uh, allow us to zoom out again. Now, Corey, we can, if we tap the screen, the controls will disappear, and yes. we can use pinch and reverse pinch instead if we want. And so that's pretty convenient if you're in the full screen view, so the controls aren't up and you want to zoom in and out. Yeah. It's uh, nice to be able to use pinch and reverse pinch. Which makes sense because most of the time, once you sort of have your color contrast and things set, you're not yeah. probably aren't going to need those buttons. Exactly. And so being able yeah. to still pinch. Uh, makes and I think if I, at this point I believe that's the only gesture available. Yes, uh, that's the only one that we were told about. And whether there are others in the pipeline, we're not entirely sure. sure. Let's bring the controls up again. Um, there is a control here, Corey, and you're going to have to help me out because I know that I asked Matt about this, and it was some kind of picture-in-picture -picture thing. Now, let's say that you're zoomed into 5x, and the minimum is 2x. Then if you hit the button, it will zoom you back to the 2x. Hit it again, it will zoom you back up to yeah, the 5x. Exactly. So, yeah, um, pretty nice feature to have that. And then finally at the bottom, we have a red line in a brownish box, Corey. What would that one do, do you think? Uh, that might be the reading lines yeah, and shades, cool. maybe, yeah. or blinders, whatever you want to call them. Yep, so if we hit that at the moment, we have our um, horizontal red line, and you can actually change the thickness of that line, the position of that line, and whether it's horizontal and vertical, and also between lines and windowing in the settings, which we'll get yeah. into the next and section. And change color, red, black, oh, that's right. or gray, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So we will show choose that. Because it's got everything you would expect from a, a handheld electronic magnifier, just um, kind of utilizing the iPhone to uh, to do those things instead. It's Max uh, magnification is 15 times. Yep. The image uh, looks good, but there is a little bit of artifacts going on. Okay. I will mention that. So, uh, yeah, it's nothing that would prevent you from being able to read like this. Okay. Not at all, but you can see a little bit of artifacting kind of going on. Again, maybe a little bit of artifacting and ghosting. Um, we were told this was 60 frames per second refresh rate, and it does seem pretty smooth as we're moving along. I would say this is, uh, yeah, it's got decent optics, and it's pretty easy to use, provided, Corey, you are able to see those buttons on the screen, although they are accessible with voiceover. Um, however, if you are using voiceover, you're probably not going to be using this particular product. Even if you can use magnification, I think the screen on this might be a little bit too small. Yeah. So the last thing we need to do is take a look at the settings and what additional options they offer us, Corey. Now, when we hit the settings button, the uh, the phone at the moment is in landscape, as you would imagine, because mm -hmm. that's the best way to use it as an electronic magnifier. But once we hit the settings button, it is going to go into portraits. Now, we can, uh, the, uh, the Optaro has its own stand to tilt the phone toward you. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and push that stand down so and rotate the phone so I can see the screen a little bit better. So uh, let's take a look at, I don't want to look at all of these, Corey, but we'll take a look at some of the sure. main features in the settings. And the first one we have is operating mode. I did mention before we had been in the advanced operating mode. If we switch that into the simple, then that will uh, actually reduce the buttons to only four in total. So two on either side. And those buttons are the settings menu button, the color button, plus 
and the minus buttons. Okay. So uh, if you have somebody who is less confident with their technology, then that might be the mode that they should be using. We also can set the maximum zoom level. So if you don't want to be able to zoom up to 15 times, maybe you don't want somebody, again, accidentally zooming up too far, um, getting confused, then you can actually limit the maximum zoom level. So uh, pretty nice feature there. We also have some options for the lighting. So this device does have its own lighting on the back, as you would expect, and you can adjust uh, how bright that is. There are three intensity levels. We have lighting um, off, then we have a medium lighting, and then we have a bright lighting. Now, we were actually on medium, Corey, um, because we because that's the default, and we hadn't changed it. But actually, that worked very well for the magazine here. Yeah. And so if you are looking at something glossy, then maybe uh, something you know in the medium range might be a little better for that. The false colors option, and that will allow us to choose which false colors are available when we press the false color button. Again, Corey, how many in total are there? 14. Very nice, 14 in total. We only have black, white, and white, black at the moment. Those are the default ones. But some other ones we could choose from black, yellow, yellow, black, blue, yellow, yellow, blue, black, purple, purple, black, red, white, white, red, black, green, green, black, black, orange, orange, black. That was pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, thank you, yeah. yeah. Did you want to have a piece? Did you want to have a piece? Um, so there's plenty to choose from, and of course, if you enable any of those, they're going to be available when you switch through the colors using the color button. We also have an update firmware, so this is pretty cool. This being a um, you know an iPhone, it obviously can connect to the internet, and so we can download firmware updates, and we can also reset to factory settings. So if you have messed around with things and now it's just not what it used to be, and you're not sure why, you can reset to factory settings and get yourself out of trouble. Yeah, it's got everything that you need in there to customize it for you. But I think the default settings are pretty well chosen, Corey. Yeah. So you can pretty much just take it out of the box, and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff necessarily. Just a quick insert because I forgot to mention one of the settings which could be important and that is the option to change the uh, reading line and the windowing settings. Right. Maybe they couldn't fit reading line slash windowing and so sure. they just went reading support. Anyway, doesn't matter does it? Let's go into the settings and find out what they do. So I'm in the reading uh, support settings and now actually I have to turn the phone um, uh, into the landscape view again. And in the reading support settings we have five different buttons, no six different buttons. The first one are uh, arrows which allow us to adjust the positioning of the line. So if it's in the horizontal um, position, then we can move it up and down the screen. If it's vertical, we can move it left and right, and the same with the window as well. The next button, the third one, will uh, go ahead and put us into the windowing mode. And so I can, again, use those arrows to adjust um, the thickness of those windows. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the windowing mode, we actually have different buttons now. So uh, as well as the arrows, we have a button that will switch us back to the line mode. And there's also a button that will rotate the windows so they are vertical. Corey, for those who don't know, uh, know about lines and windowing, what's the, what's the point? You, if you only want to focus in specifically on the line you're reading or a column you're reading, the windowing and line, a windowing and line will allow you to block out some of that other information on the screen. Yeah, exactly. So it just helps keep you focused, which yeah. uh, people can kind of lose track of the sentence as they're reading uh, when things are magnified. And so this is a way to keep on track. Yeah. You've either got the windowing, which cuts off part of the screen, and then you've got the line, which is literally just a line across the screen. If you're reading standard text, you might want that to be horizontal. But if you're reading columns, you might want it to be vertical. And so yeah. that's the idea here. Um, oops, let me go back into the support settings here. We all also have um, the uh, option to change the thickness of the reading line. And so there are three thicknesses going from thin to medium to thick. And then finally, we have the color palette. Corey had mentioned this before. We can change the color of our reading line in between red, black, and gray. So there you go. If you, if you are a reading line fan, then there's plenty of reading line options here, more than most devices, I would say. Now it is actually time to wrap up. Let's do it. All right, we have covered the device pretty in depth. We know how to use it, we know how it works. What do we think about it? Uh, I think it's a cool idea that it's utilizing a device you might already have in your pocket, your iPhone. The iPhone obviously has a good screen, which is cool. Um, but I do think there are some limitations to it. One of the limitations that we haven't yet talked about though is price. Okay, so uh, if you get it with the iPhone case for your specific phone, then you're looking at $7.14.95. If you look, get it with the universal 
uh, stand, which is what we have been using here, uh, 732.50. And then you can buy additional cases. So if you change phones, you can mm -hmm. get a different case of 20 bucks. Um, you can get just the universal stand on its own for 37.50, and the charging uh, head is 19.95. Sure. So basically, like you know, for most people, probably. 7, 715, but then you've got to buy the charging head or a, if you don't have a charging yeah, head. Or yeah. And you obviously have to have the phone already. Obviously. So you may or may not want to include that price altogether. But I yeah. do think, you know, if we compare that, let's let's talk about a, 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 a Ruby. That's probably size wise, uh, screen size wise, similar. Well, right? here's one of the weird things, Corey. The iPhone screen yeah. is very long and fairly thin. That is true. So it's a very different shape to the Ruby, even if the screen size is ultimately the same. That doesn't really tell you. You're right. Uh, it's a wide, the iPhone is like, what, six in, six inches by widescreen, where yeah. the Ruby might be six, but it's, it's more taller. square. Yeah. yeah. But I would say from a portable standpoint, it's one of your closer. Oh yeah, price-wise, definitely. And it's what, eight? Well, I think the Ruby, the Ruby XL, HD might be eight ninety five. Okay. Uh, I think the point is you're in the same ballpark yeah. as actually buying a regular electronic uh, magnifier. It should have been way cheaper, and that could have been really appealing because you're using your own phone in order to make it operate. Yeah. But actually, it hasn't come in that much cheaper than a regular um, handheld electronic magnifier. And so, are there any other benefits? So, I think that in the long run. The Optaro probably has more opportunity to add new features and, and, and improve it more than you would see on a traditional portable. The other thing they talked about too is that they are potentially working on an Optaro, Optaro that will be specific to iPads, yeah. uh, really kind of going after the school population. Although, to be honest, I think that's a, a, a key market, but I think. Um, working age and, and, and seniors would benefit too because now you're talking about an iPad mini that's like a 7.9 inch screen or even all the way up to like an iP iPad Pro uh, that you talked about, you know, yeah. you're almost 13 inches at that point. I worry that the regular iPhone screen is a little small for this type of application, uh, but the iPad could definitely be really cool. I think uh, the the Optaro does have some benefits, like uh, it does simple OCR, should we say? Yeah. It's not reading, you know, a whole document, but it does kind of allow you to read out uh, a word or a few words very quickly. So again, you can get confirmation of things that you're reading. Um, it also has the ability to do things like uh, take pictures and just share them. But ultimately, I would like to see this to Device coming cheaper because I think it would make a lot more sense than at the price point it is. It's kind of battling against um, the thought of just getting a regular handheld electronic magnifier instead. I guess ultimately, Corey, it's up to the individual. It is, and I applaud Eschenbach for trying something new. And maybe Gen 1 isn't the home run they want it to be, and maybe it will be. Who knows until it really hits the market. But I love that they tried something new. Throw it down in the comments. Let us know what you think of this device. How do you think it might compare to your traditional portable video magnifier? Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're always releasing breaking assistive technology products. We literally did though, the Maggie. Yes. And now the uh, Optaro. Back to back. I know, wow. Yeah. So if you want to find out more about things that we do, well, we have a few things going on. We have a learning management system. You can go there to check out webinars. And uh, those are kind of produced webinars where you can earn on-demand ACV REP credits and they cover various uh, topics. We're about to do one on artificial intelligence, so that should be fun. Yep. And in order to get to that, Corey, you can go to... Head over to techconnect.vision-forward.org techconnect.vision-forward.org, set up a free account. We have a live show as well. That will be every other Thursday, 11 a.m. Central. You can find that on the homepage of our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash vision forward tech connect. Call me. My stomach is rumbling. I think it's uh, time to get out of here and eat some lunch. What do you say? I could uh, not disagree with you. Okay, that, so that, that sounds like I a double negative. So, okay, he agrees <laughs> with me. Time to get out of here. See you later. <laughs>